Okay, everyone, give Mike Mueller a big hand. He's going to talk to us about Conda. Hey, thank you very much for the great introduction. I would like to talk about Conda, easy installs, and simple builds. Just a real quick raise of hands. Who of you knows what Conda is? Uh, a third. And who is actually using, Anna, uh, uh, using Conda? Uh, just about 20%. Thank you very much. Uh, Conda is quite a few things, actually. It's an installer similar to PIP, but I think a bit better. It's an environment manager similar to virtual env, but still also a bit better. It's cross-platform, though it works on Windows, uh, Linux, and Mac. It's not limited to Python, so you can use it for different languages. Actually, there are people using it for Ruby and other languages. And actually, it comes from the scientific community, but I think it can be useful for every Python programmer. So it's BSD licensed, and typically you install it, you either install Miniconda or Anaconda. I will talk about these different condas here. So there's what's called Miniconda, and it's a kind of a small bootstrap-like version. It includes Python itself, Conda, and a bunch of dependencies, like pip, and wheel and some other tools. And it provides access to many hundred libraries. So you can install a lot of libraries with Conda, maybe even thousands. And you just need to say Conda install. I will talk about this process a little bit. And there's something called Anaconda, which is a different thing. It's a distribution similar to like, if you like a Linux distribution. So you get Python packaged up with a bunch of scientific applications. And this includes, of course, Python, Conda, Conda install, and it's about more or less like scientific, 200 scientific packages. It could cut off here, so it's supposed to be there. But scientific packages about 200 or so. And if you install it, it takes about two gigs of your hard drive. But then I think a lot of scientists need a lot of these tools, and you don't have to fiddle around with installing them all separately. They all come in one thing, and then there then you pay a little bit of price with uh, some disk space, but disk space is cheap, and programmer's time is expensive. And there's something called channels. So when you install something with Conda, Conda looks for a channel, and ch channel is a place somewhere, somewhere on the internet, or s maybe even on your own machine, that doesn't, it's also possible, that looks for packages. And the default is an Anaconda server, so we don't say anything, it typically looks there. But there's also something called Conda Forge, which is a channel uh, with a lot of open source packages by the Python community. But you can also have private channels. So you can have a channel with your own name, with your company name, name, whatever. And then you can install from this channel by and say, say install dash C my channel. You, my channel is the name of the channel. And then it will grab the package from this channel will be included. There's also a lot of configuration options, which channel, channel has precedence or which channel is looked first. You can configure this in a configuration file. OK, a few basic tasks. I want to introduce you to what you can do with it. That's by no means a comprehensive introduction, but gives you some feeling what you can do. So you can install packages. You can cre create and administer environments. And you also can create packages yourself. So writing a setup.py, as you know, and doing a few other steps to create a package, a, a conda package. The first thing, you can search for something. So you say conda search, and you type in the name of the package you're looking for. I use pandas. Pandas is a very much used package in scientific library. And then Conda goes out there and is searching places. So I added, Conda, added a few channels. You see every dot, you see they're fetching packages, dot, 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 dot. And every dot means looking for a channel. So I have a bunch of channels it's looking at. And then it gives you a long display. I just cut out of a few things. And you see the three dots there, it's cut out. And it lists you the, 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 the package. So everything, this search looks for everything has pandas in its name and shows you the version that's available. Though all these versions are available, is a normal a one dot, a dot here means it is available and it is downloaded. So it, when, you, when, you down, when you install something, it puts it in a local repository and you install from there. You don't have to download it every time. And the one with the star here, with asterisk, that's the one I have installed right now here. Yeah? And you see, if it has a dependency on NumPy, because the scientific focus tells you I have NumPy 1.10, and Python 3.5 and build zero. And it comes from defaults, which is from Anaconda. But there's also a version that comes from Conda 4. So it gives you the channel here that it comes from. But this is pretty interesting. It can be a very long list. And, but it shows you 
what you have, so it's usually a bit longer here, and by the cut out quite a few, it can be several pages long easily. Okay, the search can be a bit more fancy, so um, that, that's a problem I have with Pip, when you search for something, if you search for Django, it just gives you, I don't know how much, a very, 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 very long listing with everything has a little Django inside. Here you can say for the full name, and now it displays only the package that's called pandas. Not all the packages have pandas in, it, in their name. And now I get only pandas. It's still a pretty long list, but it's much shorter already, and I know that it's pandas, and that, that's a good feature. And there's more, so you can also limit the search. You say, I want to have only, even though I did it on my Mac, I can search for all the available packages for Windows. Win32, and I also can specify the version I want. Now it shows me all the available packages for uh, version 0 0.18.1, and it tells me, okay, here, now it offers everything starting, this is NumPy 1.10, Python 2.7, up to NumPy, NumPy 1.11, Python 3.5. So there's no dots and no asterisks because obviously, I, if I'm on Mac, I, there's, no, there's no need to download it here, so that's, not there, but it would be available and would download it, and they all come from defaults and kind of things. And there's more options if you want. There's quite a few switches you can use and can make the search even more specific. Pretty interesting feature. Installing a package is very easy. You just say conda install, and you name the package, and it goes through your channels, and you, you, you can have a config file, say the channel that comes first, it takes on this channel, and see now it, it provides me with a name, I want to install this package, and typically it tells I'm going to download, here it doesn't say because I've downloaded already, typically it lists, okay, I want you to download these packages, and then I install these ones, like MKL, mask kind of library, all the dependencies. Typically if I have a properly packaged uh, application in a conda package, then all the dependencies are there, installed all the dependencies, and everything is binary. So everything, it, especially a scientific field, there's a lot of C and Fortran extensions. And compiling these things, typically works on Linux, it might work on OS X, and it's very likely it doesn't work on Windows. So that's why it's, and still, I think most people still Windows users, so the most users of Python, I think, are on Windows, as uh, according to all the statistics I heard about, and a lot of scientists and a lot of engineers. So I teach a lot of engineers, and most of the engineering companies are mostly exclusive on Windows. Some of them have used Linux, but by far the big, biggest majority is in Windows, so you need to support Windows users. And it's a pretty good way, everything is binary, and you can do this. Okay, create an environment. So this is the first thing, installing something. But very often you don't want to install in your, what's called the root environment, you want to create an environment. And that's what this command up here, you can see conda create dash n or dash dash name. So I create a new environment, which I call mypy335, and I can specify the Python version, and I say I want to have Python 3.5. And you can also have, a, if you wanted to, could have a 3.4 or 2.7 or even 2.6. So far, it supports 2.6, 2.7. I'm not sure if it's 3.3, but 3.4, 3.5. And they are pretty quick. As soon as 3.5 is out, that won't take long. 3.6, sorry, 3.6 will be supported. Typically, a new NumPy version is supported within 24 hours or something, pretty fast. And it tells me what it's going to do. There's, it never does something without asking. Uh, and it tells me, okay, I need to download these packages and I need to uh, install these packages, or the dependencies, and then if you say yes, which I did, then it starts creating this package and gives you this the cut, uh, cut off here, but it, it shows you how long it takes and how fast it's doing stuff and something like this. Okay, now I created an environment so to, in, to actually activate now I can actually list environments. I create environments, and I don't have only one. I have this just a small selection of the environments I have. You say conda and list, for instance, is one of the commands that shows you what environments you have. And you see an environment is nothing but a directory in your home folder, in my, my user folder under conda, anaconda envs. So if you install miniconda, it will be miniconda envs, and here's anaconda envs. It's just a different directory, and these directories contain all the information about the environment. And you see now the root environment is, a, is the one that's active right now. It has this stuff. Okay, you see I, I gave a tutorial of the PyData Berlin here. Then I made a new post tutorial. I made a new environment. And I don't mess up with my root. I can install whatever I like, different versions. And everything is isolated. Okay, activate an environment. So depending if you're on a Unix kind of system, Linux and OS X, then you have to say source activate name my environment, 
on Windows is just activate. So typing source activate is pretty long, so I just had defined a short alias. But that's typically how we, how we activate an environment and just type deactivate it, deactivate it again. And then the prompt changes and then you see the prompt. And now when you list it again, you see now the environment will be activated. But you always can see which one's active. Okay, and then you can say list, and then it gives you a list of all the packages you have installed. You see it tells me again the name of the package, the version, uh, here this dependencies, uh, NumPy or not, the channel. And this one is red because this one you see it's installed with pip. So you want, you will find maybe a few hundred packages there with, you can install this conda directly. If not, you can always install this pip and Conda will recognize this one. So it's not a contradiction to work either with Conda or with PIP, you can use both. And that's what I typically do. If it's not available with Conda, I use PIP and install with PIP. But Conda sees these packages and you, that's why I say it's installed with PIP. Yeah, so you have the version is installed with PIP. And you can also install deals, that's no problem. So there's no contradiction in this. And you have this PIP install there also. Okay, this is if you're a kind of a consumer of packages, you can install, you can create environments. There are way more options. I just show, show a few. But now the next thing is building a package. So you want to build a package, and there are essentially two ways you can build a package. You can just take uh, a package from PyPI and convert it into a conda package with a few commands, or you can start from scratch doing it with your own uh, package. Okay, building from PyPI is pretty easy. There's a skeleton. First, you need to install Conda build. So Conda build, if, if you have Anaconda, it's there already. If you have Miniconda, you need to install Conda build, which is a command line tool that helps you to build the package. And then you say Conda skeleton PyPy, PyPI my package. So this one goes to PyPI, fetches the package you have there, and then you say Conda build my package, and that's pretty much it. So it's not very difficult. And it builds a package, and the package is a, it's a tarball. It's a tar bc2 in this case. It's just one file with everything inside. And that's it. And now we can install it. And per default, it creates it for the, for the platform you're on. So it's, if I do this, as you can see here, it's now for OS X. And you can now install it. And there are actually two different ways installing it right now. I can say conda install, use local my package, and it just will go to the place because it knows the default place where I put it and installs it. But you can also, if you wanted to, if you had somewhere else, you could just specify the full path. It wouldn't be a problem, just the file name. This is exactly the same here, but it could be a different way. If you, just, if you download one of these, you can always install it as conda install from the command line like this. You can also specify a Python version. So even if you have a different Python, you can say, okay, build this one for Python 3.4, and it builds it for 3.4. Yeah? So even if it's pure Python, it always has a Python version inside. And this is especially useful if you build extensions in C or Fortran, which is very common in the scientific field. And this one builds everything for this version. You can also convert to other platforms. You see, I can say conda convert platform all, for instance, and just specify my, uh, my file and say output directory. And if it's a plain Python version, it will create a version for each platform, for Windows, Linux, and Mac. If it's with extensions, it's not that easy, then you need actually need the operating system because you need to compile it. So then, I'm, I don't think it's, there's a cross-compile, at least I didn't try and I don't know, but um, so, so far I compiled on Windows and on Mac, and I think in Linux is the same. Typically Linux is the easiest to compile it anyway. So if you compile extensions, it works, and I even compiled Fortran extensions, which is typically a bit more involved than C extension, and it works nicely so far. So you can create this extensions also. And then if you like to, you can upload. And you need the Anaconda client. And now I, I upload it to, the, to, to Anaconda. And you can also make your own channel if you like. So I don't have it here, but you can also create a channel. And you just say Anaconda upload and just give the full path of this file. And it uploads uh, this thing to Anaconda. And other people can install it just by saying conda install name of your package. And if you put it in a different channel, they have to specify the, the channel when they install it. Okay, this is building from a PyPI package. You can also do from scratch, so if you want 
you can customize things. And you need a few things. You need a meta YAML, so a YAML file that declaratively specifies what you want to do. And then you need a build file, and there's a two different ones. If you're on Windows, you have a build.bat bat file, a batch file, and then Linux and Mac, you have a shell file. And you just use a normal setup.py. So you're probably familiar with it, so you just use a normal setup.py. And then you have additional information in the meta YAML, which also has dependencies in it. Let's have a look at these files. So meta YAML looks like this. It's just a YAML file and has a lot of different uh, sections in there. You don't need all of them. So you have something about meta information about the package. Then you have the sources, so you can say it comes from some Git URL, something like this. You can have requirements, and there are different requirements. You requirements for building things and requirements for running. For instance, if you use Sison, you might need Sison to build it, but you might not need to install on the client machine because you just have distributed extensions. You have different dependencies for the tests, what you do with the tests, and then you have normal information about who the author is, what the license is, and those kind of stuff. Okay, this is just a short part of an, um, a meta YAML I used. So I used just my package name here, and you say, okay, the source is just, it depends where I are, two directories up, so it can be a relative path. For instance, it doesn't have to be uh, a URL. Requirements of Python and setup tools, and then for running, I need Jupyter. And see here, this is something you, you can specify this one. I need it only for Windows. And the same way you can specify Linux and Mac, so this will be only installed for the Windows version, but not for the, for the version of other operating systems. That's, that's well very important, and you can use the same syntax for at other places, so you make it dependent on the platform with one file. Of course, then you have this uh, MIT license, whatever you, you want to put in there. Then you have these build files, and they're typically, if there's a skeleton way, they just you set it up and you create files that look like this, and they're just, you see, they just call python and setup.py install, and they just call your setup.py. The setup.py is just a normal one, as you know, from the normal installation process, but you can also add other commands in here, which is very interesting. So if something is not available as a conta package, in here you can do a pip install something, and this will install the package, and this will go into this tarball. So everything you pip install, will, you will deliver with your own package. I had this problem, I had a library that was not available as a conta, and difficult, just installed it, and just could distribute it alongside with your package. But there's quite a diff few things you can do here in this build file. You can customize things. If something doesn't work, typically you have a way to do it in the build file some way or the other. Okay. Uh, and then you just build it. You say, Conda build my package, and that's it. And there, all the other steps are exactly the same as with the skeleton. So you can do upload and all kind of stuff. Install from, from the local machine on these kind of operations. Good. That's it already, so conclusions. I think Conda is a very interesting package and it's very much used in the scientific field but can be really, really useful for all Python programmers because it's a pretty good installer in a very nice package manager. You can uh, manage environments and you can also build Conda packages. It works together with pip, so it's not a contradiction. You can still use pip if Conda doesn't supply the package. Uh, but as you can see, you can always convert a pip installer package into a Conda package if you like. That might make the installation more smoother for, it, for your users, then you might actually uh, just com uh, convert the PIP package to a Conda package. Very well known in the scientific community. If you go to a SciPy, your SciPy conference, pretty much everybody will know a bit about it, I, I think. But it can be really useful for all Python programmers, and I encourage you to give it, give it a try. Thank you very much, and I'm here for questions. Because, uh, and ask them for me, right? Uh, first hand went up here. Thanks. Um, I understand I can use Condor for distribution and platform independent uh, package installation, which is great. Now, if I have, I am a maintainer of a tool, and I have lots of different dependencies uh, outside PyPI and inside PyPI and with NPM and whatever, and it would be nice to be able to just use conda install whatever for me. Would I have to package all those NPM, PyPI packages 
to conduct manually or is it possible to, I don't know, say Conda just install this and install it from pip because you don't have the package yet? Uh, depends. There are there's some things you can do. So like if you install a package that's that, that is Conda, then this package will install its dependencies. So if I say, okay, say I depend on pandas, pandas has a bunch of dependencies and will install NumPy for me and so on. I don't have to do this. To some degree, you can do pip. So far, you have to, as I think you have to write it in the, in the, in this build script. You have to say pip install, pip install, pip install. But probably the, this meta YAML will be improved. That's what I just, I saw a ticket that you can then even say, okay, this is supposed to be come from Conda, this is supposed to be pip, and this might be a different channel. So it's still evolving, and not everything works perfectly. There are some problems. There are no, no problem, the software is perfect, but so far you, you can always have a workaround by putting it in the build script, I think. So what would be your suggestion for this kind of situation? Uh, I'd, I'd put it in the build script. I had the same dependency thing, and I put, it, I put a pip install in the build script, in this uh, build uh, sh script, and it worked for me, so that was, was the easiest one. The other thing is just you can always convert the pip packages into conda packages, and then you can list them in a meta YAML and just upload them. As long as they'll be HTML, that's not shouldn't be a problem and anything. And just upload them to, to, to conda cloud, and that's it. That it is just you can automate it. You just need to list all the packages, and then you can update it if it's a new version. Just check if it's a new version and just build new packages. That okay. Be a big deal. Thanks. Uh, thanks for the talk. So one of the selling points at the beginning that is that not limited uh, uh, not only to Python, right? But all the examples I've seen all the Python packages. So what do you mean by not limited to Python? So uh, you can use this. Everything is declarative. So people use it for Ruby and other languages. So you can use the same thing. And you can also have ac uh, dependencies that are not necessarily Python. For instance, one package is called PyTables. It's the interface to HDF5. And this depends not only on NumPy, but also in the HDF5 library that has to be in a different version. And all the things can be packaged in there. So it, it, you can have depend DLLs, shared libraries, you, you can include them in your thing, and that makes it much easier. If you have a good, if you have a package at the, at the end, then the user doesn't have to do anything about fiddling around with include parts and all this kind of stuff. Suppose compiling HDF5 is not the simplest thing. So I, I tried this once before Conda, and you can easily take two days out of your life and you still haven't gotten anywhere. All right, thanks. Hello, thanks for your talk. Uh, very to the point. Uh, given that recently we have been adopting on PyPI uh, binary wheels, uh, they seem to solve most of the issues that Conda seems to solve other than the fact that you have a single command to manage your installed packages in virtual environments, and that's good, it's nice. But what's the big advantage now that binary wheels are, well, taking off? Yeah. You write wheels, is, it's a great step forward, I would say. There are two things, not everything is, is in a wheel format yet, and you might not have the right version and the right platform in the, in the wheel. And Conda can install wheels, no problem. So you say pip install and install the wheels, so that's not a contradiction this way. Uh, at this, at this, as far as I know, the story goes like this. Travis Oliphant, he's a CEO of uh, Contumin, which is behind this. It's open, everything's open source, but there's a company behind it. And he, he asked Rita van Rossum a while, a few years ago, about this packaging, and Rita said, just go ahead and do it. And that's what they did. So it's kind of a little bit a parallel, to some degree, a little bit parallel to pip and wheels and something like this. But it's, I think it's more comprehensive, and it's better. And many has a lot of nicer features than pip and wheels. For instance, the search for a name. I, I couldn't. I don't know. Maybe I'm not smart enough. I couldn't get pip into just showing me this package. It shows me everything. It shows me hundreds of packages for Django, and this is not really useful. They have to run it through Grab and do your own thing. Why not just say I want to just customize the search? And those things are in this the Conda. So Conda is nice, but you. As, as I said, you can use everything that pip and wheels and PyPI, so you don't exclude it, you can still use it. And I do it very often because it has only a few hundred packages or maybe now a few thousand out there, but not 80,000 or 90,000, whatever it's on PyPI. Thank you. Thanks. All right, any more interesting questions for Mike? Here we go, yes. 
best question yet. Uh, okay, so is there like any uh, standardization effort? Like, are you working with Python packaging authority or something, or is it going anywhere, or, or will it be forever separate? Like, Conda is great supposedly, but only in the scientific community, and like everyone else uses pip. Great question, but I don't know the answer. Uh, uh, it, w it would be very nice. I would I would like to see it this way that both, but actually everything is open source, and both communities could use the code from the other. Easily, no, no problem. I think everything is BSD or MIT license, so there shouldn't be a big problem. They reuse code, and the, I don't, I'm not really sure why this is not a bit more coordinated effort. Um, I'm, I don't know. It would be very nice to have one stop and use joint forces and do it together for, for these things. And I don't know why, it, why it's the case. There might be some reasons, and I haven't really found out yet why. More questions. More questions. Keep the dream alive, everyone. I, uh, uh, I have a question. It's like a two-parter. So presumably, if I install Anaconda, it's going to come with its own versions of Python, as well as my system Pythons that I might have installed separately. Um, and I once had this problem where, or, or you know, I don't know if anybody else has seen the problem where you upgrade your operating system and you upgrade your system Python, and all your virtual ems are now broken because something, 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 which I don't really understand. Um, and you have to delete all your old virtual ems and recreate them. Uh, is Anaconda going to magically fix that problem for me, or sub-question, um, if I upgrade, you know, if, if there's a Python 3.5.1 and a Python 3.5.2, um, how does Anaconda manage the upgrade process there? Does it need to rebuild a bunch of things? Um, there shouldn't be a problem. So if you work with these environments, those environments are pretty much isolated. They're not totally isolated. Sometimes if you use command line tools and they're installed like in the, in the scripts directory, it's usually from there. If not, it goes outside. So if you say pylint something and you haven't py installed pylint in your environment, it might take the wrong version and gives you a lot of syntax errors because it's a pylint for 2.7 and you on a 3.5 environment. But if you install everything, it puts everything in the directory and there shouldn't be a problem when you update if you work with environments. And you will see if you work for a while, you will work with environments anyway all the time. You will rarely, actually, maybe the best approach, just have the root just as a helper and then work in environments so, uh, or isolate it. Because you can always, if you, you can always reproduce the environment, you can freeze the environment, it just, just specify what you have installed, you get a big list of installation, and then you can give this, this file to somebody else and the other person can say, okay, install from this file and install exactly the same versions as the other ones. You can reproduce the environments and that should solve the problem. I, I don't know, there could be some, uh, you can you only find it out if you test it really and do it, but theoretically there shouldn't be a problem, practically there might be one, I don't know. I mean, did anyone, is that only me that's ever had that problem of changing the system Python and all the virtual ems are broken? All right. So, so um, I guess we're thinking that Anaconda is like kind of even more isolated from system Pythons than 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 virtual ems manages, if it never has that problem. Yeah, there's some voodoo there. Further research required. That's not Any more questions? Yes. Yes. Fantastic. All right. Nobody wants to hear my voice any longer than absolutely necessary. Are the environment relocatable, or is there any plan for that? Can you repeat the question? I didn't get it. Are the environment relocatable? So I install it somewhere, let's say I archive the environment and uncompress it somewhere else, like another computer? Yeah, so I just said you don't actually copy the environment. You just copy all this. Every all the packages are installed with a version. So, but I showed you these listings here. So, one of these uh, early things shows you this. Whatever is installed, you have this uh, uh, list somewhere. Do I have a list? Yeah, something like this. So you can actually freeze. No, this is search. I had to somewhere. You can. Tell, tell, okay, export all the versions I have in a file. You can just get a file with all the names equal the version, and then you can give this file to somebody else, and somebody else can recreate exactly the same environment, exactly the same versions. Yeah, yeah but I'm not speaking about uh, recreating the environment, but just taking the environment and put it somewhere else. You, you should work, it's just a directory. The problem is in, not everything is copied, though. If, if like I have this pandas version, I have made, I use it in ten different environments, but it's only once in my in my uh, repository and not directly in the 
file is just a sim link, and you have to make sure that, that you copy it along with, with it. But I think there should be an option to copy everything, just zip the whole directory and put it somewhere else. It should work as long as the same operating system. But I, no guarantee, but theoretically it should work. You can, can try it out, but maybe recreating is it's a safer thing. So if you recreate, you can also say, okay, uh, it, it freezes everything with exact the same version, but you can also go in the file and edit and say, okay, it shouldn't be exact the same version, it should be at least the version or even update the version so you can go in the file and customize it. And then still everybody who has this file would create. And this nice thing is would work. I can freeze it on my Mac and somebody else can create the same environment on Windows. There shouldn't be a problem. If I zip the file, it would only be for the same operating system. All right, any more for any more? It is now, oh, there is one. Okay, you have to make it a question. You will talk very, very fast, and Mike will talk very, very fast. Um, okay, so uh, let's say that I have a package, Python package on Linux that has, uh, that needs a separate in installed C library. And, and let's say that this C library expects another C library. So what will Conda do? It will uh, download this library and all of its dependencies dependencies and put it in the Conda repository locally, or what will happen? Uh, there are different ways. I had the same problem. Typically, what I did, I just included it in the, in the file. So I had this, you can, you can specify the, the dependencies. So if you, if you compile something, I had Fortran dependencies, some shared libraries somewhere, and you include it. So uh, I'm, I'm not really, uh, myself, not really sure how to, the best way to do it, but there, there are different ways, including uh, shared libraries in there, and you can distribute the shared libraries along, and they will put the shared libraries in this environment, and they wouldn't cl clash with your shared libraries. Because you might have the shared libraries, but maybe different versions, and then it works for a while and until it doesn't work anymore because it's a different version, something is different. So you can distribute shared libraries with it. There's different ways of, of doing it. it had, you, have, you still have to look at, there's a lot of recipes out there how to do it, and probably you will find one that serves your purpose. Okay, let's give Mike another big hand. Thank you very much for a great talk. Enjoy the break.